This is Danny Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Portsmouth lightweight Lucas Ballingall. Lucas, how you doing? We're very good, thank you, mate. How are you? I'm good. Um, you're just good. a few days away now from headlining uh, the first show for Fight Zone TV, um, which must be pretty exciting, and also challenging for the English lightweight title, a belt that you've been wanting for, I looked at our old interview, which is about just under a year ago now, and you were talking about it then, so it's obviously a belt you've wanted for a while. Yeah, yeah, 100%. Uh, this is uh, the first of many. Um, I'm planning to uh, get in my career, and I'm, yeah, I'm buzzing. Um, yeah, being made headliner as well, which is another uh, bonus to the to the fight. And yeah, I'm just buzzing to get in it. This launch of Fight Zone TV seems to be a huge kind of step forward for small hall boxing, which has lost a year of its life, of course, because of the pandemic, but is now coming back and people can actually watch the shows without attending in person. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it looks uh, really good. I can't wait to see how it uh, plans and how it looks uh, on the night. And yeah, I'm, I'm happy and I'm buzzing that we've got the opportunity. Uh, and then everyone who can't make the, uh, make the show can uh, view it and watch it as well. So yeah, it's great. The champion, Myron Mills, he's someone, as we've said, you, you nearly fought before. I think he got injured, so that didn't happen. You were mandatory for the belt for a long time. I'm assuming you must be now a bit of an expert on him and his style. Not, no, to be honest, I don't really pay much attention. Uh, I don't, like I said before in other interviews, I don't care what he brings. I'm going to bring more. I'm confident in myself and my ability to know that I've got the beating of him. Uh, so, yeah, I don't need to study him. Um, I'm just confident in myself. He's been inactive for a while. You did get out uh, once in 2020, out in Belarus. If the pandemic hadn't happened, do you think you still would have taken that fight? To be honest, no, probably not. Um, I had no opportunities. Uh, we got offered the fight. A lot of British uh, fighters got offered to go out there and a lot turned it down. Uh, I just wanted to fight. Uh, um, that's what I do. So, yeah, I took the fight. Uh, didn't go my way, but I still got made, remade mandatory after that because they, they took me off mandatory for a bit uh, just because the fight never happened. Uh, no fault of my own. Uh, and they remade me mandatory after losing out in uh, Belarus. So, uh, nothing nothing bad happened from that. It's all learning. And now I'm ready to pick up my first title. How did you feel about that whole experience in Belarus and were there positives that you took from it? Of course, before that, I never went past six rounds. I've got eight rounds there against, a, on paper, a puncher. Well, he could punch, he could dig it quite hard. And I showed that I could do the rounds and box box good. Like, I outboxed the lad. Like, I outboxed him. A lot of people thought I won it. Looking back, I thought I won it. But it is what it is. Like, going up to the uh, back guard and you're not going to you're not gonna get the decision. Uh, but, yes, yeah, so I took loads of uh, positives from it. It's all learning. Like, no negativity at all. It's all positivity. So, yeah, I'm happy. Did you have that sense when you were waiting for the scores to be read out? Because obviously you felt you'd done enough, but you knew where you were as well and that he was the house. Exactly. So did you have exactly. that in the back of your mind? Yeah, of course. Um, like, I probably could have done a bit more in the fight, but looking back at the scorecard, so I would have actually knocked him out to win. Yeah, it wouldn't have made uh, a difference. Yeah, I know No, it wouldn't have made a difference at all. Uh, but yeah, like, I, I, I was undefeated before that and no one really wanted to fight me. Now I've got a defeat on my record. Uh, the opportunities is coming. So, yeah. What, what can you tell us? I know you said you don't know loads about him, but what can you tell us about Myron Mills and what sort of fight do you expect it to be on Friday? He's a he's a good fighter. He can box, he can dig a little bit on paper. Uh, um, it's going to be a good fight and it's a worthy headliner as well. Uh, I think on, on paper, it's a fifth, proper 50-50 um, fight and I'm just looking forward to go in there and show what I've got and pick up my first title. And does it help that it is on Fight Zone? Obviously, it's not an established um, broadcaster yet, but the fact that people will get to see you, it's got to help with your profile, you would think, as well. Oh, yeah, of course. Um, they're selling uh, Fight Zone very well. Um, it looks very professional, uh, and I'm, I'm, I'm proud to be uh, headlining on one of their shows. So, yeah, I'm happy. Uh, everyone back in Portsmouth uh, will be supporting me, watching it, subscribing to the app. So, yeah, it's all good. And it's been all change in the lightweight division, particularly at British level, since we last spoke. We now have a new British champion in Maxi Hughes. Um, no mandatories or all board orders announced for him yet. What, what do you make of him and, and how he's gone through the ranks this last year? He's been one of the most on-form fighters in Britain. Exactly that. I like watching Maxi Hughes. He's a very good fighter. Um, 
and yeah, um, he's he's a great champion. But uh, I'm looking forward to my uh, my title fight this weekend, and I'm not looking past my belt. Of course. And talking of on form fighters in Britain at the moment, your brother has had a pretty special year as well. As seeing what he's achieved just made you even hungrier for success in your own right. Hundred percent, of course. Yeah, like uh, he's doing very well. He's finally got his opportunity. He's finally now going to be on the big stage, and all the hard work has paid off for him. And now it's time for him to shine on the big stage. And I live with my brother, uh, so I'm very close to him and uh, being uh, being part of the journey. And oh yeah, it's my time now, and I'm ready to uh, put my name out there. I mean, you've been a pro for a long time, but the fact that he's kind of almost suddenly got this exposure and this profile that his skills deserve for a long time. That must make you hopeful the same will happen for you. Of course. Yeah. Just got to be positive. Um, if I, well, when I pick up this title on the weekend, um, it should give me big opportunities. Uh, the English title is a good, uh, good bout. Uh, and winning that will put me in the mix with, uh, with all the domestic. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, I'm, I'm just buzzing to, for Friday night. So you live with your brother, you work together in the gym, obviously, as well and, and stuff. Do you ever get sick of each other? Uh, yeah, sometimes. It's a, it's a bit annoying, really, because like he was in his camp and I was helping him out a bit. And then uh, as soon as he finishes his fight, like, I'll go into camp. So, like, he's darting, I'm not darting a minute. So I'll be oh, good. Right. So after I pick, after pick up my belt, we could have a couple of weeks of enjoying food together. Yeah, it must be hard when one of you's dieting and the other's not. It's almost like a relationship, isn't it? And you're like yeah, 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 yeah. looking enviously at his pizza or whatever. Yeah, it'd be ideal to be in camp at the same time, de definitely. But uh, yeah, it's, it's great. Um, he's got champion's mindset, and so so have I because I want I want to win belt. So it's good and positive to be around him and live with him. Yeah, so it's a blessing. Obviously, you had that fight. Um, last year you've now got this quite early in the new year i'm assuming with small hall boxing coming back the launch of fight zone you'd like to be quite active this year oh of course 100 percent um it's, it gets depressing when you when you ain't got a fight date like training with no target um i love boxing i, I love boxing so yeah i just can't wait to get in the ring friday night win this bout and then we can uh, look forward to the rest of the year and get more fights in now as much as your focus is on friday night as it should be you mentioned there you're a big boxing fan. We know there's a huge fight taking place the following evening over in America. Uh, Josh Taylor and Jose Ramirez for all the gold at 140 pounds. Yeah. Only one division above you, of course. Yeah. What, what do you make of that fight? How do you see it panning out? It's a great fight. It's a great fight. Like you said, all the bouts are on the line. But I'm, I'm pretty confident that Josh Taylor will do the business. He's, he's world class, like pound for pound, one of the best. Um, that we have and uh, I'm pretty sure that he's, he's going to do the business yeah 100% Is that fighting in like a massive fight in Vegas is that one of the things on your list like boxers have the, the ticks that like, they want to pick, tick things off the list Of course I'm, I think it'll be on everyone's everyone's list they'd like to fight in Vegas uh, for, I'm from Portsmouth I'd love to fight in Fratton Park and yeah. with my brother paving the way there's, there's a possibility that it could happen so um, yeah there's great great things great things I want to do in boxing uh, and but uh, Winning this title on Friday night is uh, the first the first step. Great stuff. Well, it's been really good to catch up with you. I'm looking forward to watching the fight on Friday. On paper, it's a really good one. So, fingers yeah, crossed. Yeah. And um, we'll, we'll have another chat um, next time, hopefully, with a with a new belt over your shoulder. Yeah, hopefully, mate. 100%, mate. I'm out there. I'm going to win that belt. And then, yeah, I'm bringing it back to Portsmouth. So, yeah, thanks, mate. Cheers. Good stuff. Take care.